Someone like Reaper Ray comes along, shows them a different way. Well, then they want him to go away. So Rembrandt was very famous for doing a lot of self-portraits. He did them as a young man and through his life, but they really was prolific at them as an older gentleman in the later stage of his life. One of the main reasons for that is because Rembrandt, the greatest painters in history, did not have any subjects and couldn't afford anything else. So he painted himself on canvases on back of other paintings. Rembrandt. And yet, when you look at his latest work, the work that he did at the end of his life, it's justification for his strife because he really does find the sublime in a new way every time. But art is always about evolution growing and changing. All the colors need to be rearranged. You can see Rembrandt very, very much the evolution of how of his discovery and his contribution to painting. As an older man, very monochromatic, a lot less color, a lot darker, and cheaper to paint too. But absolutely evocative, a person with deep, deep wisdom and pain, but yet a connection to something greater than him. Oh, good old Rembrandt Van Rim. So when we celebrate art, we look every year at all the wonderful galleries and the murals that you can see in any town or city. Remember, Rembrandt died poor and alone. So we could learn and grow. He could have done paintings that the people wanted, conformed to the standards at the time. But no, it wasn't a way in which he could find the sublime, bring reason to the rhyme of moving art forward. Maybe you heard of another Joe by the name of Vincent Van Gogh. There's a guy, another guy who sells his paintings right now for tens and tens and tens of millions of dollars, at the very least. Van Gogh did not sell a piece in his life. Think about that. Rembrandt sold some shit. I sold, sold some stuff. Yes. <laughs> you know, he had his heyday, he had some good success, and then, and then, um, and then people went away from him. Van Gogh didn't sell one piece. Nobody celebrated his art. Go game, dug it, and he had some friends, but nobody. He owed his brother help him for a while. But now you cannot go into a doctor's office or a dental dentist's office or any place like that without seeing Starry Night print hanging on the wall. Or some flower. Or some calendar that shows them all. So the next time that you look at a beautiful sunset and you paint something sublime, Remember that Vincent Van Gogh never made a dime. Oh yeah, celebrate the art martyrs. So that we uh, that helped us all get a little bit smarter. Yeah. See, art has a new meaning now than it had in the past. And it's incredible. It's a celebration of everything now. Everybody can be an artist. Everybody can have a connection to creativity. Learn how they can see and let their voice sing and fly exponentially. But yet art has a gravity that brings certain people to a way that no one has ever seen. That we may explore and find stuff we never did before. Oh no, there is so much more to painting yet to do. It is not over, not at all, it's true. I mean, my own paintings are starting to explore the third dimension. Yet do we view that generally as composition and painting or sculpture? What if we throw colors into the mix in the parallax view into compositional harmony? Just for example. Oh yeah, art can help us see so many new things. It's how reality can sing. Think about it even 30,000 or more years ago. Oh yeah, when we're in the caves of Cordoba or Las See these caves. Oh, there's these giant bulls. Antelope and other wonderful things in there. Giant pigs. Yeah. Better be in tune for the cave. Yeah. So these wonderful works of art are one of the first things that start to set us apart as a species. 
from all the other beings on the planet. See, these guys, people spent so much time painting in these caves. We know so little about them, but we know it took a lot of time. And those caves were hard to find. They weren't for everyone to have to climb in there. There was some sort of spiritual ritual going on, this deep thing. And it's not, they painted not really the animals that they ate, but rather all the different herd animals, buffalo and antelope and other things that were on the plane. But they made these bulls so much larger than life, so much more than what they usually are. And you can see they match and blend beautifully with the contours of the walls of the cave. Oh yeah, like it was made for it. And those paintings, 30,000 years later, still have the same spirit, the same gravity, in which art helps us all to see something brand new in the, in the human perception of reality. And as long as we can keep alive, this can go on for infinity another way to make art. And yet, to try to capture that sublime power that exists from even 30,000 years ago to this day, now that is where art is a step to find a really other way. So I encourage every one of you and whatever you do to always try to take it a little farther. Don't be afraid to say, hey, this sounds pretty cool, but what happens if I do this? You know, just give it a try. That's how we can make art fly. For truth, it really is something that can take us to another level. The government, the powers that be, they know, they try to hide it from us. Art can be an absolute force to be reckoned with, the citizen part can help revolution in a passive, peaceful way, bringing understanding and harmony to the world today. It cannot be underestimated any further. Art for truth, art for life, art to end strife. Thank you very much. You can find me, Art for Truth, on YouTube and Facebook, and uh, plenty of artwork, and thank you very much for your ear and your time. Great job! Great.